Fun to follow you. <laughs> Today, I'll be making Chinese pork chop king, or we call it a pa wong. So let's get started. The main ingredient, around 6 pieces or 6 slices of pork chop. These are taken from pork tender leon, and this is around 500 grams. I will have about a uh, thumb size of uh, ginger. This is to extract the juice and marinate this uh, meat. For frying, I'm using crystal sunflower oil. I need to extract the ginger from a thumb size of uh, ginger, preferably old ginger. And I'm using a zester or a grater. This is a plain grater to, to extract out the ginger pulp. And by the way, this ginger has been frozen because I bought a lot, so I have to freeze it, otherwise it will go bad. The side is pretty soft. Washed it, uh, don't have to remove the skin, you can start eating. So roughly grate it like that. And you put a 4 tablespoon of hot water. The purpose is to get the ginger to infuse into the water, and we need the water to marinate the meat. 4 to 5 does not matter. 2, 3, 4. You can actually put five because I have a lot of uh, meat there. You take a spoon and uh, press it down a bit. The uh, water is hot, that's why you don't want to burn your hand. So let this sit while you prepare the, uh, the pork chop. Wash it first. Just give it a quick rinse using the back of a chopper or a cleaver. You just hammer onto the meat, or you can use a, a meat hammer. Just break up the meat like that. Take a portion, chop it more. Turn it around the other side also. And then you can either cut this into uh, three pieces or two pieces. So you prep all the meat like this, thin this out and one piece of uh, pork tenderloin to be again cut into two slices. Now you will find that there's a, uh, these are fat. You either remove it, but there's a disadvantage if you remove it in the sense the, the meat might just break up easily. So what you do is, you just use a sharp part and just give it a slight chop to break up the, the fat so that when you, when you fry, it doesn't shrink and pull back the meat. For bigger pieces, I actually divide it into uh, three. So I'll continue doing all this uh, chopping and we'll come to show you how to marinate the meat. For the marinade, you need quarter teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda or sodium bicarbonate, half a teaspoon of five spice powder, slightly more than half teaspoon of salt. I'm replacing one teaspoon of oyster sauce with one teaspoon of abalone sauce. I run out of oyster sauce. I have a tablespoon of uh, Chinese wine. I'm using uh, Hua Tiu. Uh, recommended is Xiaoxing. You need one egg. I have about two and a half tablespoon of tapioca flour and one tablespoon of corn flour. And you also need a dash of pepper. So use a dish like this, you put in all the marinade except the corn flour. This one put last when the meat goes in. You crack in the one egg, mix it well and then uh, put in the, uh, the meat. But before that, I will strain in the ginger juice first. Use a strainer like this, strain in the ginger juice. Here is about uh, 4 tablespoons. So with the ginger juice, it be about 5. Then you dump in the, the meat, slices by slices. Uh, we also put in bicarbonate of soda last. It's because we want to uh, soften the meat further. Of course, some say that uh, ginger will also soften it, but ginger is more for killing the fishy smell or the smell of the pork. Use your hand. Make sure all the pieces is well soaked. So now I'm adding in the bicarbonate of soda. 
I will let it sit for about 10 minutes before I add in the corn flour. This is to allow the liquid to absorb into the meat before I add in the corn flour. So I put in a dash of pepper. If you don't have white pepper, you can actually put black. Not an issue. So you want it more spicy, you throw in more. So cover it and let it sit for about 10 minutes before I come back and put in the, the corn flour mixture. 10 minutes is up. So I will put in the corn flour mixture. Notice there's not much juice here. Spread it out. Quite a lot. I want thick batter. Now if it's too dry, you can still add a tablespoon of water into the meat. If you go into this kind of texture, when you fry your, your slices will be quite crispy. Make sure you have all the flour mixed well. If you're not in a hurry, it's preferable that you can marinate one hour. But if you are in a hurry, minimum time for marinating is half an hour. And that half hour now hour includes the 10 minutes that you marinated just now. It's a bit dry though, I can add in one tablespoon of water because I want the water to soak into the meat. The meat becomes soft inside and then crispy outside. We'll come back in an hour's time. While we marinate the pork chops, I will go through what we need for the sauce. You need uh, 3 tablespoons of HP sauce, 2 tablespoons of tomato sauce, one and a half tablespoon of lee and perrin, or we call it the LP sauce. So you need three tablespoon of plum sauce, two to three tablespoon of sugar. Depends on the amount of sweetness. The this uh, plum sauce that I'm using is quite sweet. That's why I'll be using only two and one and a half teaspoon of sesame oil to fragrant the, the sauce. You also need some toasted. Uh, sesame seeds for garnishing. Three tablespoons of water. So just stir until the sugar dissolves. You can cook the sauce while waiting for the pork to marinate using medium heat. Pour the sauce in and cook until it kind of thickens. Because I'm cooking the sauce ahead of the pork chop, so I will let it cook. Until it's quite thick, then I will switch off. Later, I will heat it up again. This is only to cook to get the. Uh, I want to see whether the taste, because I reduced the the sugar, so I need to taste it. After boiling, if you feel your sauce is too runny, you can add in a cornstarch slurry to thicken the sauce. One teaspoon of cornstarch to one teaspoon of water. You can increase the heat now so that it comes to a boil. Taste. It's just right. It's rather runny now. Never mind. I'll switch off. I'm, I use mini wok because I don't want to use so much oil. About a cup. Heat the oil to medium. Use a chopstick like this to test the temperature of the oil. You will find bubbles rising from the chopstick. Then the oil is quite hot. Very little bubbles now. So I'll give it another one minute of heating. So I took this out uh, maybe 10 minutes out of the fridge so that the meat is not so cold. The, the oil is quite hot now, you can see the bubble. So I'll place in the meat, try to flatten, place it flat on the pan. I think this pan can go about four or five pieces, right until it's uh, slightly brown. So once the meat has reached to this color, you can and this, uh, you can remove it from the oil. So this one I have been frying for about, I think it's about 4 minutes. Finish frying all the, I think it's around 18 pieces of pork chops. So here I'll be heating up the sauce. It's quite thin here. Keep stirring. Do not stir as you pour to avoid clumping up. And add in a teaspoon of sesame oil. So I'll just eye pour it. This is for the, the shine. When you add in the oil last, you notice the sauce is more shiny. Then you drop in all the meat, toss it, 
slightly toss it. No need to cook it so long. You just want the sauce to be coated onto the pork chop. So once the, all the pieces are coated, you can switch off the heat. If you want to have a nice decoration, you can put it on top of a, a dish of lettuce. So you see, even though you put a lot of 3 tablespoons this and 3 tablespoons that, the sauce is really not a lot. The last thing you need to do is to sprinkle the toasted sesame seed onto the pork chop. So there you have it, Chinese wow! pork chop thing. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please like, comment, share. Most importantly, subscribe to my channel to help me build the channel. Thank you for watching. Bye! Fun to follow you!